Hi, this is my Titan two post hoist. You've probably seen it in some of my other videos. What I uh, discovered was that uh, I found some oil laying on the floor a couple times. And I thought, oh, how did that squirt out of my car? Where'd that come from? And it didn't come out of my car. I'm uh, 99th percent sure it came out of one of the cylinders. So I bought this hoist back in 2008, installed it myself with my brother Rick. And uh, so it's been up here for 16, 17 years. Um, wasn't really expecting to ever replace any uh, seals. I don't use the hoist that often. Once every couple weeks, maybe. Uh, doing oil changes, brake jobs, stuff like that for my, my personal cars and a few friends. So I got an uh, oil leak. So I had to buy a seal kit. And um, the seal kit cost me about $100 delivered. Got it from, uh, from Titan. Uh, it's difficult to find any aftermarket stuff. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, see what it takes to... Uh, Put the seal kit in. I'm only going to do one post. Uh, it's actually the other post. And uh, first, so uh, spoiler alert: <laughs> getting that seal on that piston was not nearly as easy as I thought it would be, uh, based on even watching some of the other videos that people have made. I had a heck of a time. So if you want to jump ahead and look at uh, uh, pulling the rod out, uh, changing the seals. Uh, changing that seal. Jump ahead to here and it'll be a lot of fun. Um, All right, we're going to try and start the process of getting this uh, piston out. So uh, I'm going to, my uh, lovely assistant Colin is going to push down on the down lever to relieve the pressure in here. And we're going to try and push the, uh, the excess oil down. As you can see, probably from chain wear, there's probably about an extra inch of travel here in the piston. So go ahead and uh, push it down. Colin. So you can see the piston slowly going down. And I'm prying against the, uh, the like the ratchet blocks inside here. So this will get all the excess oil out of here. So when we pull it out, we don't have a lot of oil running out. That might be about it. Okay. So now, hopefully, I've got the hoist all the way down. I don't have any blocks underneath it. It's not uh, cammed up on locking on one of the uh, lock tabs. So let me see if I can lift this chain up and get it off the pulley. And I can. And then we'll just lay that down here on the uh, yellow part of the hoist. And there's the piston. Um, so here's the, uh, the cap for the piston, and it's got some holes in here so that you can use a spanner wrench. But interestingly enough, both these caps on my pistons are already hand loose. So you can actually unscrew this. There's never any pressure in here. This is just ventilated to the, uh, to the atmosphere. And I'm kind of running out of room. There's a seal right here, but we're going to replace that. So hopefully I have the right seal. And there I'm stuck. So now I almost have to do the reverse. Try to get myself a little more stroke on this piston, but the piston wants to lift out. There we go. Oh, that's interesting. I think that's all the way out. But what I find interesting though is that um, this uh, rod and the piston should be coming out now. But it's getting sucked back. Oh, I haven't reviewed, um, I haven't taken off the hydraulic line. So it's a hydraulic oil that's actually sucking it back in. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to loosen the, uh, the hydraulic line coupling on the other side. Okay, um, I've got a um, three three quarter inch wrench. We're going to loosen this fitting, and uh, it came with from the time it was new. This is a a plug for the hydraulic line. Not a lot. 
lot of oil coming out of there. <laughs> and it's loose, so that cap isn't going to work. That's just a dust cap. All right, so I've got an empty five gallon oil can. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that in there. There's just a little bit of oil coming out of the piston, not very much. All right, got the hydraulic line disconnected. Let's see if we can lift this thing out of here. That's much better. You hear it sucking the air in through the fitting at the bottom. So we've got the uh, rod, here's the piston. Piston is uh, attached to the rod with this large nut. So the next step is to take that off. This is the cap and that has a seal, I, I believe right here. This is just a uh, bumper or a spacer. And then here's that guide seal. And this is the main seal here. And then underneath this piston, between the piston and the rod is an O-ring. And that's all contained in this kit here. So we'll see what we got once we take this nut off of here. I think I'm going. Whoa, come back here. Nut washer. And the only thing that should be holding this on is that O ring. You want to hand me the uh, that big. Oh, there it goes. Give it a little twist. So goop on it, but not too bad. So once again, the uh, oil pressure is on this side. So this seal is keeping the oil from getting past uh, here. This oil ring keeps it from getting past uh, this connection here. Now, it's probably easiest to pull this uh, this seal off when it's still on the uh, uh, on the rod with the uh, nut, but we got to change the O-ring anyway, so we can go ahead and change this first. So. Here's the O-ring. All right, so we're going to slip this uh, this O-ring on. You always like to put a little oil in there, just like your oil filter. You want to put a little oil film on there. You don't need a lot; just need a film. That helps it actually seal. slips right back on. I don't think there's any reason why we have to leave this apart. So it's got a nice uh, nylon nut on it. Usually you don't reuse those, but I don't think it's going to hurt anything. That is on. 
Now this is just a split ring, so this is gonna come off pretty easy. And it looks like neither one of these is the right size, which begs me to hope that this one's the right size. So I guess we're gonna reuse this one. This doesn't really seal anything. It's more of a, a guide as far as I know. And this is the tough one to get on and off. There's not a lot of uh, flexibility in these seals. I'm gonna imagine that this old seal is even worse. Oops, almost lost that one. <laughs> when, yeah, I want to get here in the front of it. But I've conveniently got the camera stuck in the way. Yeah, take, uh, I don't want to damage that. Here, go ahead and hold that up there like that. There we go. Okay, lift it up. There we go. Yeah. And before I put the piston on, I'm going to slide the cap off of here in this uh, spacer because we've got to get this seal out of here. Oop. That came out of there pretty easy. It looks like it's the same size. And there is another one of these inside there. So I think that's why I got two of these, but they're the wrong width. This one is the same width as this one here. So I'm gonna leave that one in there. Put a little oil on here. And that pops right in there. So that slides right back on. This little spacer ring wobbles its way back on. Then you put this one. All right, I got myself some dipping oil now, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try and uh, dip that in the oil.
So that was incredibly difficult getting this thing on, but uh, just pushed through it. It didn't damage anything on the outside except to stretch the outside of the seal. I hope I didn't do too much damage on the inside, but I had this thing all oiled up and fingers crossed. So let me get this seal back on there. But yeah, that's not for the faint of hearts, that, that's for sure. Okay, so we got that oil all oiled up and my hands are all oily. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and inspect the bore. It's all nice and clean and shiny. Pour some oil in here. I'm gonna slather some uh, grease in here. It appears that the uh, seal is quite a bit smaller than, quite a bit, relatively speaking, smaller than the threads. So if you can keep the seal centered, it's not gonna cut, touch the threads. So it keeps going down as it pushes the air out. And there it stops. So it was, was hand tight before, so I'm just gonna leave it there. This vent hole happens to be facing this way, which I think is more by coincidence than anything. And we'll get that pulley lined up. chain back on. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and connect the fitting back up. So I got it together. It was um, surprisingly easier than I kind of thought, especially uh, taking this collar off. Once I found out that this collar is actually uh, <laughs> hand tight, uh, that simplified that. But getting that seal on, you didn't get to see, I didn't videotape all the struggles uh, of trying to get that seal on. And eventually I just had to, I, I, it is, I put it soaked in boiling water uh, to try and soften it up, and it didn't seem to make much difference. Oiled the heck out of it, which of course makes your hands all slippery. And I just know that once again, the professionals that do this for a living, <laughs> they have a better idea of how to do it. But it can be done by us amateurs. Um, so anyway, hope it helps uh, anybody else who's got a uh, Titan 9000 um, uh, hoist. And uh, good luck with your project, and I uh, hope it helped.